on the gardening, I interested in gardening? Well, oh, always interested in gardening. Oh, I suppose at the age of maybe 25, 26 it starts, you know, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, uh, when I came here in 1987, there really um, wasn't anything in the flower. Everything was shrubs and trees and lawn. So all the flowers I introduced into the with strawberries, and they've all, the little, the, the, the strawberries have kind of come down along and self-seeded the whole way along. So I never planted the strawberries along here, I just put them on the top. So they're spreading, yeah? So they're spreading, they're spreading the whole way down. I suppose it's a natural thing for strawberries to yeah. have a... And you have a nice crop coming on as well, is it? Oh, a huge crop. Yeah. Every year, because of the heat here on the rock, there's a huge crop of strawberries. It was put in as a tiny, tiny hmm. plant. Chiastiophyllum oppositiofolium. <laughs> it's a long name. It's a long name, yeah. But everybody loves this little one. <coughs> and it would grow anywhere. It would literally grow on, on absolutely, you know, pure rock. Is it a form of a sedum, is it? It's like a sedum. Like I a actually sedum, thought yeah. it was a sedum, but it's not a sedum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've just learned the name. Isn't it a beautiful long? It deserves it's a long, yeah, because it's beautiful. That's got you the in the exam. <laughs> <laughs> Have you studied much of it? Have you read much on gardening? Oh, I, 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 I read a lot. Oh, yeah. I read a lot. Yeah. The, blue, the blue and the white large campanulas, they have self seeded here again, but they're happy here. They're growing. They're a little bit large for a rockery, but because they're self seeded, I've left them and I haven't taken them out. They're happy to grow there and produce the really good flower. But eventually, um, it has, it's been in the garden, I'd say, maybe 20 years, and it's only started to actually bloom in the last two or three years. Where it's that's what you call patience. Oh, total patience with that one now, really. The garden will teach you great patience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You, get, you have to wait. The secret is in your garden, you stick with what grows in your garden. That's right. Because I've yeah. spent a fortune on unusual stuff and it just doesn't like it here, so the secret is. This area here was a, a sufferer from the famous so snow of 2000. As you can see, all the I left in the, the stubble of all the shrubs that all destroyed in the snow. So I put in gooseberry bushes, three new shrubs. Oh, okay. Three gooseberries. And I'm hoping that they'll take up the space. Is it recovering? It is. It's recovering. And I've kept in low stuff there just to fill the area until the gooseberry bushes mature. Mm -hmm. And my love is what we could get in thousands as a child is now a rare plant, the cowslip. Oh, it's yeah. a rare plant now. It's a lot of plants in the place. And next thing before you know it, there's a garden there as well. Is he uh, a garden fan? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, in fairness, very good on shrubs. All the shrubs here are, and trees are his, his choice. So he's brilliant on shrubs. I, I, I want to show how you can do pots as well. You can actually, in a small area, you can have lots of beautiful pots of beautiful uh, flowers oh, yeah. in it. And they, it's amazing how many different plants grow together and produce a beautiful show. And along here then, um, I have a lot of campion. Campion is a great one. It loves, the, it loves shade, it loves sun. And it's a beautiful pink flower, and it'll flower away for about two or three months in summer. Oh dear, do you have a big greenhouse here? Big greenhouse. Big greenhouse. Is where yeah. the, it's a working greenhouse, so there's a lot of things around the place at the moment. But yeah, I like to grow tomatoes, and um, I have various varieties this year. I've decided to cut back. I was, I think, I had too many tomato plants in the past, so I'm cutting back a little bit. And. Um, I'm there, I'm growing for black varieties this year. So I've got black varieties, then I have sun gold, which is a yellow one. And then I have three um, black uh, cherry tomatoes. And then I've got uh, gardeners to like to go with a little bit of the traditional red. So I have three, three reds. And then again, honeysuckle. And uh, over here with peas. I'm a disaster on growing peas, but I'm trying. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm yeah. Trying. yeah. Whatever it is about And this is the populated area here, is this it? This is the populated area. This children's area here and as you can see there's some, these are some yeah. really the wild area here. Campion has completely taken over. I was going to take it out but um it'll be a sin. I was told no don't no. do it. So I Oh it's a great colour there isn't there? Go. You see the campion can take over. I think we have to do something now definitely this year. But this is the lovely thistle which is um, a plant, a wild plant that I put in here and geranium again up here. And then this is this is coming down from a kind of a very wild garden into a, a semi-planned one in here. It's a climbing hydrangea. It wasn't really meant to be here. It was up against a wall over here, but mm -hmm. it was moved and it's sappy here, so I'm kind of leaving it. The Sambuca plant, up, which I'm looking forward to it growing, the red one, which is very small up there, and um, Centaurium montana, the blue flower, the blue shrub there.
Foxglove. Uh, Foxglove. Yeah. Monbrich. Oh, lots of Monbrich. Well, Monbrich was once upon a time, I really enjoyed having them in the garden, but they, again, they've taken over. So you just have to maintain them and keep them. Yeah, but they give a great splash, don't they? They're beautiful it's flower, full, aren't they? In full flower. It's great to have full. them bloom at the moment. This is um, a beautiful pink fuchsia. This is at least 30 years old, this, this particular shrub, and every year it just flowers away, animated. So when you get tired, you retire under the shade of the tree here? Oh, listen. Many's the time I've come out here with a cup of tea, and the next thing I'm gone, and the cup of tea is there, cold, stone cold. So you have a lovely view. Plant, oxalis. And it produces the most amazing pink flowers. And it's, I've never seen it in anyone's garden, but I have loads and loads of it growing all over the place. It's a beautiful plant and produces beautiful flowers. Now, this is not the, this is not the flower of it. Yeah. They're absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful pink flowers. Oh, they're just stunning. Delicate. Oh, they're beautiful. They really are lovely. And they close in the evening and then they open up during the day. You got your little helper there, yeah? Oh, my helper, yes. This is Digger. She loves digging holes. Alien. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the alien as well, and it's just starting to. Oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? They're beautiful. They're, they're yeah. beautiful plants. They really they're beautiful, are. yeah. But you have to start planning for September, you know. And they, for me, the red hot poker in September is great. Sure. Feature, that's pleased. your feature plant. And Autumn Joy then. My lovely one is the Bleeding Heart as well. I love that plant. And that is in April and May. It has these beautiful pink flowers. And I also have it in white, which is around the corner there. What so this is your woodland bit now? Oh yeah, the woodland, yes. Mm. Um, in January, it, it looks full of plants now at the moment, but in January there's absolutely nothing here. It's just down to the bare soil. And I have covered in snowdrops. And then after that, multicoloured um, crocus come and the leaves of the crocus are very nice. They're, they're very pretty. And then after that, up come the bluebells through the leaves. And the um, chinodixa, bluebells. Um, I have miniature daffodils of all different types. I mean, I have a lot of varieties of daffodils. And the daffodils grow on the outsides of the semicircle here. And then there's the autumn crocus. Again, you have to be thinking of September. So the leaves of the autumn crocus You have a great canopy here, haven't you? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. It was alone at one stage, and then I just decided to take all the grass out and just start putting in all the different plants. Is that a cherry, that a cherry blossom, yeah? That's a cherry blossom and a chestnut. And a chestnut. Yeah. And um, the cosmos, these are blue cosmos, and the camisia, which is just here, uh, are, yeah, are the acanthus, sorry, the cardiac part. Time lapse camera on it would be nice, wouldn't it? See the difference. See the difference, yeah. yeah. It completely yeah. changes. And this is the Francoa again, the Francoa Sansifolia, and it's right, I'm delighted it's in full uh, going to be in bloom. And the whole this whole area is covered in white, most beautiful white and pink flowers. Mm -hmm. it's, a ni it's a nice plant, I like having it in the garden. And again, the coral. The coral of that. And again, the, the Aqualasia in bloom here. The or the, these are lovely, the, um, the red huckers. They produce a nice white flower, but they're actually the colour of the foliage is quite good as well. Mm. So and then there are different variety of rose here. There's the Galway Bay and the Dublin Bay rose. And the, again, the fuchsia. This, this is the same fuchsia. I planted a cutting of this the fuchsia from the other side of the house. And again, that's what it must be at least 20 years old there. Cutting every year, full of blooms in September again. You see, you have to think about September. <laughs> and the, the, the Japonic, the, yeah, the, that's there. Oh, look at it. It's very old. It's, it has been through lots well, and lots of 
What's the lifespan of it, or is there a lifespan? Well, it looks a bit shaken at this year. I don't know whether the weather was the upgrade, so maybe that's the reason for it. Um, this is a lovely white rose, then, in here. It's the Galway Bay rose. And, uh, they have to come, yes. Yeah. So. yeah. Jasmine is, is, um, is really pretty in, again in September. It's it's really yeah. And that Christmas as well. Isn't it? But it has taken a bit of a, a knock. A knock. Did you come back? Yeah, it's probably the wind of the That's last right. few days, yeah. So, and then again, I have the um, poppy. I just have it in various places to see where it's going to go back. Yeah. So it's doing well there as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Again, grown from seed. I'm a, se I'm a microscopic person as well. I like growing things. Well, you're experiment. Oh, big time, yeah. Big time. Well, you have, you have the, the fruits of it here with all the varieties yeah, and the yeah, colour. Yeah, yeah. Every place has different colours. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's beautiful. And your little woodland space hidden in there. Yeah, it's, and it's so shaded. Yeah, yeah. the old grove. Yeah. And you're not too far from a gin and tonic either if you decide to go. <laughs> <laughs>